hello again, and welcome to Hand of Fate. Ah, one more for the game. Come, sit. You have passed the Thirteen Gates. And you come to my table to play the game of life and death. Your stake is wagered. I refuse none who come here. Yet, I say, turn back. The game begins. One lives and one dies. Let us see what you are made of. Here is the first member of my court, the Jack of Dust. Twelve in all must fall before you may challenge me. Let the cards fall where they may. We begin. Okay, as I was saying, this is Hand of Fate. This is a card-based map, um, roguelike, or sorry, roguelite action combat game. Um, it plays out a lot like, um, kind of like a third-person action melee Binding of Isaac or something like that. Um, so just to kind of get the normals, you can see over here my health, my, I have food, gold, you my inventory. You can always review your cards here. Got a rusty POS axe and just some light armor. And yeah, so let's go ahead and start playing. That first moment, that glinting weapon, the call to action, to adventure. Truly, there is nothing like it. So, as you can see from some of these cards, um, this is a non-combatant card. Um, I'll go ahead and let you read this. I'm not going to read out what they say out loud. But, with this one, I can climb down the canyon to pick up the weapon. And it brings up this chance. Choose from these options. In fact, what one nice thing about this is, if you actually pay attention, the cards actually are not level. So it doesn't come together and then randomize which one goes where. You can actually follow specific cards to go specific places. Let's see a sword. I'll take a sword. Now. A moment to savor. That will make you much more effective. Okay, this is an event card. I can ask her for a bunch of stuff, supplies, longer life, or gold. Um, later on, I'll be able to ask her for blessings, but not yet. So I'm going to ask her for gold, because I don't really need a lot of food right now, and I have 100 of 100 health, I don't need more than that. I'm sure you are grateful for that. I was never a fan of illusion or pretense. Here, I'll make an exception. And this is Mr. Lionel, a nice little goblin. Early in game, Every you should get a shield. Every step you take food, but you will also heal as you proceed. You can now reflect your opponent's ranged attacks using your shield. Make good use of this skill if you wish to survive. Your journey is well begun. This is what I was looking for. You show some aptitude for the game. Perhaps this will not be as boring as I thought. Okay, so now we can actually do some combat. So, as you can see, you I can have now my sword and shield. Your opponent's attacks. Hit the counter button when you see the flashing indicator. And you can kind of see it tells you moving, attacking, stunning, dodge rolls. 
and the counter indicator. And as you can see, uh, as you get combos, you do more damage the higher your combo is. Which can have some effects with certain items, but right now it doesn't really do anything. An axe. A peasant's weapon, but effective nonetheless. Yeah, sure, why not? If you were wondering why you've been collecting all that gold, you now have your answer. We're starting to get into the meat of the game now. The back and forth between resources and rewards. One nice thing about shops, and you, after a while you're gonna not do this, but early on, you're gonna want them to go into shops all the time, specifically so that you can check out cards that they might have that you haven't unlocked yet. So, or that you don't know what they are yet. We're gonna take it's some aggro. that you kill them, you'll curse them too. And we're gonna take the antlers. They don't do anything because we need uh, the lizard men. Beware. Lizard men in order to work that. But lizard men aren't gonna happen this at this point in the game, but it's extra money, so why not spend it? And it, it has a visual effect. It kind of looks cool. I'm sure it's not called Dead Man's Gorge without reason. Not expect you to get by without some protection. So now we're about to go on to a boss. You fight. have reached my first champion. A good man driven to madness by a war that took all from him wife and child, kith and kin. From such dark and brittle iron, I forge my tools. Now we see your metal. So here you can kind of see a little bit of description. Uh, here's the bottom kind of darker one is kind of the lore part of the card, where the top part is kind of descriptive. He's stronger and faster than other bandits. Um, he can become enraged, has unblockable attacks. And yeah, he also, every time he or any of his followers attack you, they'll still go. Um, also from his cards, you can see this little token emblem. This will become important later on in the game. Um, this token will unlock more cards yeah. if you can defeat this encounter. So as he said, like you get more cards, so that's how you actually expand your deck, is by getting tokens. Some enemy attacks cannot be blocked or countered. Get out of the way, or stop them with your own counter-attack. So as you can see, he kind of rages. Um, I do have my Hag Gauntlet, so whenever I hit him, you can kind of see he gets slowed. Makes it a little easier to react to him. Not that it's exactly bleeding, but... It allows me to drop him really 
easily. Down into the worms with him. Perhaps there is peace for him in the grave, poor soul. One champion has been sent to the cabinet. Yet we are only at the start of our road. You will face 11 more opponents who will test your strength, your memories, and your resolve. Few fall at the first hurdle. None reach the last. We have wagered, and you have won. You may claim your rewards, yet I will also claim mine. As you improve, so do I. Balance must be retained. Okay, so, as you can see, all of the cards here I picked up are encounter cards. These will go on the bottom. They're part of the map. Um, this card here, specifically the Jack of Skulls card, is the next boss, in fact. So... Also, at the top, you can see I re this was a reward for beating the Bandit Jack. Now, all these cards with the red backs are all equipment cards. Only two of those are actually decent equipment, but... Eh, we can move on. Shall we deal again? Okay. Well, this was the first episode. Um, I'm gonna have a handful of them up by, on the first upload, so... I guess I'm gonna go ahead and leave you there, and I'll see you next episode.